and welcome to Marcella's Purse. I am Marcella. Today I have this handbag for you. I called it Emma and I used a cork fabric, uh, this kind. It's a very thin layer of cork and it's quite uh, fun to use actually. And um, to make the bag I used a gliding foot on the sewing machine to help me sew over the cork. I have here, a, as you can see, it has a, a zipped pocket. It's a, it's a nice size actually to keep your phone, keys, things that you need in a rush. And inside it has magnetic snaps and one open pocket. It has a, a square bottom shape. And on the side it has these details I will explain later on. The handles are a recycled set of handles from an old handbag that I had. I did like to keep them so I am using it today in this handbag. Um, I cannot give you a lot of information on where to position uh, the handles in this tutorial because I don't know what kind of handles you are going to be using. However, you have to keep in mind uh, to, to keep a sensible distance between both ends of the handles, center it well in, in the front of the bag and, and at the back of course. And uh, also keep in mind uh, the distance between the top of the handbag and the zipper pocket. So keep all those things in consideration. I have a different a kind of handle here, like you might be using something like this for instance. So. Keep in mind the size of this uh, flap bit when you are positioning your handles. Uh, in the comments below there will be a link on how to attach the handles the, the way I do it. So for, for leather handles, so I hope that that is useful. Also here, because uh, I am using a, a cork fabric that doesn't fray, I just did a couple of slits, you will see later on, uh, to put the this uh, piece of fabric through. Uh, however, if you're using normal fabric, you might want to either sew it on place without making uh, gaps and cutting the fabric through and um, attach a, a piece in a decorative way by, by sewing it instead. I hope you, you like this tutorial and keep on watching. Thank you. I have my materials here. I have one piece of the outside of the fabric and I'll show you what we have to do. I did some markings there, but I didn't read my notes properly, so I did the wrong marking. Anyway, I'll show you. From the top corner on the right, we will do the same on both top corners. We have to measure first three and a quarter inches down. One, two, three and a quarter. There. And from the outside, one and a quarter inches. One and a quarter. We'll do the same on the other side. I already cut the piece here and I'll cut the other rectangle off. I have the other piece ready here. This piece this piece here will be the front of my bag and as you see I had other markings. Also you will notice that I use some interface, interfacing, firm interfacing and I actually put two layers of it because I wanted to add extra firmness without adding bulk. So I put one layer of fusible interfacing, firm interfacing, when that was fused I, I waited a, 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 about 10 minutes or so, 15 minutes, and I applied the second layer on top. Now, you can see here that I added a patch. Please don't be uh, scared of mending, adding pieces together. Of course, I don't mean to do a patchwork with your interfacing, but if you're short like me, you can add a piece. It, it is a very good material, and if you apply it properly, you will not have any problems. I do this because every time I do a tutorial, I have to buy materials and it costs me money, so I try to use them to the maximum. Okay, so once you have cut the shape, 
from the top here down measure one and three quarter inches or four four point five cent. Draw a line because you will have to fold that across later on. Okay. Also, in doing so, you will see that this side will overlap quite a bit down, and that's necessary for for later on again when we put the back together. Also, uh, what I did, I marked the uh, the seam allowance, which is a, a quarter of an inch or half a centimeter. And I drew the lines for my seam allowance and I did from the little corner to that corner a diagonal cut. That will be important later on. And I did it now because I don't want to forget. Okay? Right. As I said, this is my main fabric. My main fabric. This is the front of my bag. And if I fold, I, I shall clip it there. I'm using clips because it's cork fabric and I don't want to use pins just in case I leave um, holes in, in the fabric with it. And here I have one of my handles. Now uh, I didn't, uh, I'm, I'm measuring the position of the handles because these are the handles I have. I cannot give you a specified, a specific um, uh, positions and distances because I don't know what handles you will be using and um, I have here using the lining fabric I made these uh, little straps to hold the handles in position there and I made, I made the little straps just by cutting a length of the fabric and I folded it in half so that when I folded it it was the right width to go around there through the this little buckle shape thing and I saw them as I folded uh, lengthwise I did the stitching there leaving an opening, continue here, so I was able to turn it inside out and I ended up with this, okay? I haven't closed the gap yet and um, I will be attaching this later on like so. Uh, there is a link in the comments where you can see how to attach leather handles in case you have uh, leather handles that have uh, a, a leather uh, flap here, a strap here to, to be attached to the bag. You will see also that I have other markings here. It is because I'm using cork fabric and I wanted to do a pre-cut that you will understand in a moment uh, because I don't want to rip it later on if I do it the traditional way. You will understand in a moment. Uh, I have here a piece for the zipper pocket and what I did I folded the fabric in half to the determine the middle point that you see a mark there and uh, that's my middle point and I want um, the zipper opening to be uh, six inches which is just uh, 15.3 centimeters <coughs> the, the length there and what I did let me do a little close up for you so you can see better. What I did was to measure from the top edge down I, I measured uh, three quarters of an inch which is about two centimeters from the top and I drew a line across and the gap here from the edge the distance to the the beginning of the rectangle is three quarters of an inch which is two centimeters. So based on that top line that I drew there, there, I measured down 
again uh, was it um, three three sorry three eighths of an inch which is one centimeter so one line there and one down to create a rectangle as you see there and I also drew I also drew a middle li a line between the two lines just in the middle point which would be about half a centimeter between both of them I drew a line and just coming to the end here I drew a diagonal line towards the corners there there and there there is also a link below in the comments on how to do a, a zipped pocket just in case uh, I'm not explaining myself properly here and what we will do now is to go to the sewing machine and we're going to sew the shape of the rectangle just just the rectangle that we drew earlier and we will come back now that I did the sewing in the rectangular shape I have also cut along the middle line like so and I went through both fabrics that's the important thing you have to go through both fabrics but as I mentioned earlier I already had cut a slit on my cork to make it easier for me to go through and it worked well and those cuts here in the diagonal in the corner there as well right so um, we have this little triangles there in the corner we will go and turn it put it through like a like letters in a letter box we'll push this down there to the other side all of the fabric turn it around making sure that this looks right as a square shape mine is not right there so I will have to do an extra cutting I am back <coughs> as you see I, I, as you remember I put the fabric through and this is the back I ironed it and um, <coughs> I ironed it at the front as well and because it is cork I put a damp cloth on top uh, to prevent it, the cork to stick it a bit onto my iron now I did make a mistake earlier uh, do you remember I mentioned that the opening here was one centimeter uh, I actually had to make it bigger I had to make it one centimeter and a half and um, silly me because I was thinking of this kind of zippers and the gap is to accommodate not only the teeth but also the slider I mean in this zipper it would have been okay which is what I normally use for openings but um, this is a fancier bigger slider here and it wasn't going to be able to fit through so I made my gap one and a half uh, centimeters uh, wide which is about uh, six uh, five eighths of an inch or six eighths of an inch so I'll explain so you see we have to put the zipper there and the fabric on top and this is what I mean if the opening is too small the glider won't be able to move to slide through so apologies for that so I'm closing the zipper and do a bit of a close-up so you can see better there and I'm putting the fabric on top as you see the zipper is longer than needed and there if I open the zipper I will um, put a pin here so the zipper doesn't move too much Uh, I would advise you to do a couple of stitches just to keep it in place might be better and there I am I'm placing it in place now I am going to go to the sewing machine 
and I'm going to stitch, I am going to use the zipper foot and um, if you have a gliding foot for your zipper would be better as well I think I will do that because after some testing with the cork fabric I did find that it worked better if I used a sliding foot, a, sorry, a gliding foot in the machine so I'm going to sew the zipper I'm going to sew around the rectangle like so, like this, all the way down. Now, when I am going over the teeth of the zipper, I am going to be extra careful. I don't want to break my needle. So let's go and do that. Ah, because um, I don't want to put pins and make holes on the cork, I'm just going to put a little bit of fabric glue on top of the zipper there. If you have double-sided tape, you can use that as well. So to secure it in place, so the zipper doesn't move as I saw along. It's just a little bit to keep the zipper in place, making sure that I don't put any glue where the needle will be going. So not too close to this fold here. Okay, here's my zipper. And you see, I can now uh, open and close uh, without difficulty. Now, uh, this is the fold again of my bag, so my bag is going to be looking like that. Uh, it's important, of course, uh, because uh, you will be using probably a, a handle different than mine, <clears throat> you might need to uh, locate this opening, this zipper, lower or, or higher, depending on the size of, of your handles. I, I did mine, uh, the measurements I gave you, uh, according to my uh, handles. After finishing sewing the, <clears throat> the zipper, I did some hand stitching here at the ends, uh, just uh, to secure the, uh, the teeth of the zipper. And with some sturdy scissors that I'm not afraid to damage, I'm just cutting through the, the excess and the same here at the end, at the other end. And now we're going to take the other piece of the <clears throat> pocket. We're going to put it facing right side down. I am going to pin it in place, like so, making sure that all the edges match. And I'm going to I am going to take it to the sewing machine and I am going to sew I shall fold this back like so out of the way and so that I can sew the edges the two pieces together around and um, we don't need to leave a gap it's just so all, all around again as you sew all around make sure that you keep moving the main fabric out of the way so you can sew the edges properly. Okay, now that I have sewn around the pocket, always moving everything out of the way, I have my pocket here, nice and lovely, but um, remember when you're sewing over the zipper, especially if it is a metal zipper like mine, uh, be careful <coughs> around here, be careful and if necessary just skip a little bit and then you can retouch it by hand because it's very dangerous. If you break a, a needle, it could actually, the piece of needle could jump on your face, so be careful with that. So there we are. So I will continue now with my handles. I have attached the handles to both uh, parts of my bag. So remember, whenever you want to put any accessories, details on your bag, always do it before you ensemble the bag. So in this case I have done the pocket, I have attached the handles and what I will do next is to attach uh, the magnet snaps. I can remove these clips there on both sides and I already did some markings so you have to find the middle point uh, lengthwise and I came down from the folded edge about three quarters of an inch and that's my middle point there 
there and I did the same on the other side so I know that when I close the bag the magnets will be matching so we're going to take one of these panels and I have the magnet here I will not do any extra reinforcing in this uh, in this fabric because as you remember I already uh, put two layers of interfacing so I'm putting this this uh, little washer there on top of the mark I just did a dot in the middle point the little round thing goes there the hole and I'm marking those two things and then I can do a, a cut to put the the little legs through and I have a little seam dripper or a small sharp pair of scissors and I'm careful with my finger at the back so I don't hurt myself little slit and there go the legs and the washer at the back and flatten it down with my strong scissors There it is. I will do the same on the other panel with the other part of the magnet. Now, now that we have the magnets on both sides, remember we did some markings there earlier when we first cut the piece of fabric. That's the fold. See my allowance? Remember at the beginning of the video? So this is, we're going to fold this towards the inside and that's the little diagonal cut we did. So I hold it with my clips for the moment. And the same on this other edge. And we have to Fold along that line, like so. Keeping the edges nice and neat. Oop. The same on the other side. And we will go to the sewing machine and we will so, oop. we're going to sew along here, up to there, and here, down there, on, on both pieces of fabric. That's the finishing touch there, 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 and the same on the other side, on the other panel. Now, I have these little strips of fabric. I just folded the fabric as I did with the... Uh, these little flaps here, tabs, and I want to add a detail to my bag and I want to make a little slit, a little cut there. I have marked a distance which is um, one inch from the edge, from the very edge and um, this is optional but I'm, I really fancy doing it. I have in my mind I can see what I want it to look like. So because cork doesn't fray, I'm only going to do a slit carefully. And the, the little slit is um, as wide as uh, this little fabric strips. So I want to put it through. I think I have to make it a little bit bigger there.
there to make it go through like that and I have on the other part of the bag I have the mark here for the correspondent opening and it should go through there now I cannot put it through yet because we have to sew this part uh, the two pieces together and we will do that I am going to uh, take this off for a moment I will do the cuts on this side as well so there are openings on, on each of the of the panels and I shall put this right sides together moving the handles down out of the way I shall put them right sides together and I am not going to do anything about that little end there yet I am going to sew the sides the bottom and the side again and we will do that I have the two pieces together here and I'm going to put my hand inside and we're going to do a box bottom by making the side seam meet this seam at the bottom we have done this before so with my fingers I can feel this both seams meeting so I get couple of clips and we're going to do stitching across here and it will be two inches uh, long get my, my ruler instead So I said two inches so I am finding the half two inches is one inch obviously and two inches is about five centimeters so I am moving this ruler so the one inch mark which is the middle is on top of the seam there and I am going to sew across here and I will do the same on the other corner and then I will just trim the excess okay I did the sewing and I cut off the excess in each corner so we are going to turn it inside out now and we have our square corners there and here looking them out right now uh, here are my little pretty ribbons for the little openings I did here so I'm going to put one through gently I don't want to rip the fabric any more than what it's needed there's one and that's the other one here so I am going to go to the sewing machine I'm, I am going to remove the big arm of my sewing machine so I can fit this sideways and I'm going to stitch along here and along here to prevent the rib from going any farther and keeping this in place that's the stitching there and, and there on both sides so it's a nice little detail I think there and um, here is the lining I have not forgotten about it and you might have noticed that the lining is is shorter than the, the main fabric because it doesn't need that flap there so I am going to open one take one out and here I have two pieces of fabric 
to make the pocket. The dimensions are in the comments as well. And as usual, I started sewing around here. I put the two pieces right sides together, like so. And so around, leaving this gap to turn it inside out. And we're just going to sew it on, in the position that's more convenient for us. Turn it inside out, making sure that the corners are nicely pointing out. And we will go to the sewing machine, sorry, to the ironing, uh, ironing board and we are going to iron this, making sure that these edges are folded towards the inside. Press there, put it there, or like so if you prefer. And so in a U shape, sides, bottom and side, and closing the gap that you left there for turning. And find the middle point by folding the fabric vertically. Finger press, do the same with the pocket. Find the middle point, so that middle point against that one. Pin it in place, pin it in place and then just sew here, here and there and you will be closing the gap leaving this opening and I'll come back. The pocket in position, the gap closed and we're going to put the right sides together of the lining fabric in the same way as we did with the body of the bag and we will pin around to keep it in place, making sure that all the edges uh, match, especially in the corners. Oop. I shall go to the sewing machine and I will sew along here, there, come here, stopping around here to leave a gap big enough to turn this inside out later, the whole bag. So it's about 20 centimeters, I would say. 20 centimeters is about eight inches because I have the handles to consider when I put it inside out. So I will sew here, here, stop around there, continue here all the way up and finish there. I am back with the lining and in the same way we did here with the main body, I I did the corners here on each side and I'm just cutting the excess like so and that's the opening big enough to let the handles come out and as usual we're going to put the, the outside inside right sides together and when you do this I always like, if I open my handbag, I like the pocket to be there for some reason. That's my liking. So there's the pocket and I'm putting this inside. If I put it like this, I, I know that the pocket will be in the back side. Here it is. And I have to make sure that uh, the seam here matches that seam. So I'm putting it there. Get my clips. And as you see, is these are the markings that we did at the very beginning when we cut off the corners of the main fabric. So one there and one on this side. And again matching the seams. And we will go, we will go to the sewing machine and we're just going to sew this uh, side, this bit here, this here, uh, and this one there, nothing else. I have sewn that there on the side, this bit here on the side, on each side. I'm putting my hand through and I'm going to turn the bag inside out gently so I don't rip anything. And 
I am pushing the lining towards the inside of the bag. And later on what we will do is to fold the, the raw edges here of the lining on the back, fold them towards the inside like so and, and top stitch along there to close the gap. So I'm putting the lining as it should go when we're finishing with it. Oh, my handle came off. I shall have to do something about it. Okay, so if we put the back flap like that, flat, we have here, uh, you can see that the lining is not attached to the flaps. So I'm just going to fold the seam allowance a quarter of an inch or half a centimeter on top of that flap there that nothing has been done to it yet. Put it well in line following uh, the stitching that, that we just did on the side. Fold it following there, catching the end of the flap there. I shall put a pin. I have pinned the lining to this flap there and here. Remember, make sure that the, you keep the right distances. And, and then I am going to go to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew along here. The stitching will show obviously on the other side and, and that will be a decorative touch. So sew along here, continuing and sewing on top here of the side as well, on top there. Okay, so that will give us a nice stitching all, all along. So shall we do that? And here is our handbag. I do like the side details. I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial again. And don't forget to subscribe. I shall see you soon. Bye.